Okay, so we have our horizontal enemies moving. Uh, we need to create vertical enemies that go up and down that we have to avoid. And we're also going to make the door in this level um, such that when I collide with it, I advance to the next level. So in your project, you should have already created the vertical um, guard. I'm, I'm going to do that here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate the whole horizontal guard uh, object. So I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to call it now OBJ guard V for vertical. And in this case, I am going to change this. I don't want him moving left and right. I do want him moving up and down. And when he collides with the wall, I don't want him changing horizontal, but rather vertical direction. So now I have that much going, and I'm going to now add some of these enemies. So I'm going to go to objects. I'm going to add, um, well, let me see. Let me go to here. And when I hit OK, that's when the name sticks. Sometimes you'll see it's still called object something. So I'm going to add some object verticals. I'll put one here. Where else would be good? And I'm going to actually zoom in out a little so I can see a little better. And I'm going to put, let's say, one here and one here, even one here and one here. These are all going to be little areas that I'll have to dodge a bit and avoid these. Um, put one here. And for now, that's fine. As you create your game, you're going to start to assess the level of difficulty or challenge. You're going to have other players assess that as well to help guide you a little bit. And uh, one of the nice things is, you know, iterating and just adding those extra enemies to make it more challenging. All of those things are pretty easy. And once you get the game mechanics going, and you're going to eventually be creating multiple levels, so they should get more challenging as you move on. So I've done that. Let's just see if my object, uh, I bet my... I bet I will not have it working yet where when I, uh, I don't think I did anything for when I collide with the vertical one. So why don't I do that? Because we kind of know that. And again, I could duplicate this. So when Bilbo collides with, I'm going to duplicate this. When he collides with OBJ vertical, now watch, this is already great because jumping to start self is still correct. Jumping to start other is still correct, so I don't have to make any changes there. So I'm going to test my game real quick. I'm a fan of continually testing. Um, that way, if, if an error arises, you kind of know where the root of it was. Oops, so there. I did jump back. He jumped back. And all of that's working, right? So now we're on to the next step, which is going to be to um, move to the next room now, when I collide with the door. Now... Right now, I don't have a, room, a next room, so I would get an error if I told it to go to the next room. So I'm going to avoid that by creating my next room. And I'll call this, how about room, uh, I call the other one prison halls. I'll call this one room um, prison yard. You know, this is where the prisoners hang out and, um, and you know, maybe lift weights, play basketball, um, play cards, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's going to be 1280 by 768, like my other room. Okay, and now I'm going to um, add the. Uh, I'll add. Well, all I really want to add in this one for right now is my main character. I don't even have to do that, but I just want you to see that he's in there when I get here. I'm going to actually leave the creation of this room to you. Um, you don't need me for that part. You'll be just kind of. Uh, it'll be a great review for you. So what I want to do now is click OK for my room. And now I have two different rooms, one and then two. And I want to set it up that when Bilbo collides with the door, it's going to, and this is, all, this is under main one. Down here are all these different things I can do for rooms. Now, I could go to um, a, the next room. I could also do something like go to the previous room. I could go to a different room and choose what room that's going to be. There are a number of different, um, and then I could also even check if the next room exists, I can go there. For now, I'm just going to go to next room. In other words, in this game so far, it's pretty just linear that I get through one level into the next. 
um, as you make your adventure game, I'd love for you to have different choices where I can exit through different parts of the room to go to different places and really create an adventure idea. So let's try this much. And once we've done that, it'll be your turn. And then you'll even create level two. So you'll have a little more to do on your own now. So let's see. Um, so far, shouldn't be too difficult because I didn't add the element where I need to get a key or anything. Um, I will wait for these guys to get out of my way. Um, I think I'm going the right way. I'm going a little faster than that guy, so I might be able to cut him off at the pass. And to test your rooms, too, a lot of times what I do is rather than playing through a whole long level like this, you might move your door a lot closer to you just so you can test that it works. But I'm almost there, and here we go. And now I'm in level two. And remember, that Bilbo's still programmed, so he still moves. Um, so we're in pretty good shape now. And now you're going to create what you want for this room. Um, in fact, what I'll tell you to do now is create room two and room three, presumably, and have it all working that you have enemies in, in all three rooms and you advance from room to room and all that. And there's still so much to get to, but this is a great uh, point to be at right now. So good luck, and I'll see you soon.